Let's talk about gas chromatography that's used in DUI prosecution. But first, let's remove the shorthand and really talk about what we're typically doing. For blood analysis for ETOH, its proper technical name is isothermal, static, headspace, gas chromatography using wall-coated open tubular capillary columns with a flame ionization detector. We just use the shorthand of HS-GC-FID. The technique is made up of distinct parts. First, isothermal, which just simply means the same temperature throughout the run. In other types of analysis, including some drugs of abuse analysis, there can be temperature programming legitimately. Number two, static, which means that every variable remains the same throughout. In other types of analysis, including some drugs of abuse analysis, there can be other variable programming and that it can be legitimately done. Number three, headspace. That's a method of sample introduction. Greater information about that will come later when we discuss it a little bit more. And then number four, gas chromatography. That describes the matrix that the sample must be in so it can be examined. And we'll talk about that in greater detail a little bit later on. And then the fifth part is wall-coated open tubular capillary columns. That's the primary method of separation, the major component of achieving the qualitative measure and we'll talk about that also a little bit more later on. And then the sixth component is a flame ionization detector. That's a method of quantification, and we'll talk about that in greater detail a little bit later. In forensic science, controlled substances and illicit drugs, commonly referred to collectively as drugs of abuse analysis, we typically use GCMS. What we traditionally simply call GCMS is best properly labeled as gas chromatography using wall-coated open tubular capillary columns with a mass spectrometer acting as a detector. It too has distinct parts. Number one, gas chromatography. Again, that's the same definition. It describes a matrix that the sample must be in so it can be examined. Number two, wall-coated open tubular capillary columns. And that's the primary method of separation of the major components so we, we can achieve the qualitative measure. And then three is a mass spectrometer. The method of qualitative confirmation and also quantification. MS or mass spectrometry is used for determining the masses of particles, for determining the elemental composition of the sample or molecule, and for elucidating the chemical structures of these molecules. The MS principle consists of ionizing chemical compounds to generate charged molecules or molecule fragments and the measurement of the mass to charge ratios. There are different types of MS such as electron impact and electrospray. The simple answer to the original question that started all of this is that the same methods of initial separation in GCFID remains the same in GCMS. In terms of the principles involved, the only aspect that is different is the detector. The MS, or the mass spectrometer, in favor of the flame ionization detector. The most difficult aspect about understanding GC, and it's not that hard at all to understand. In fact, most folks think that it's simple even after their first exposure. The most difficult part is the part that remains unaffected in common between GCFID and GCMS, namely the GC part. I offer another perspective and offer to explain the differences as follows. Have you ever seen a Russian doll? If you've seen a Russian doll, and you might have not have known its formal name, but it's one of those things that has to do with there's a doll, and then you open it up, there's other dolls, and it's a set of traditional play wooden figurines that separates from top to bottom to reveal a smaller figure of the same sort inside, which has in turn another figure inside of it, and so on. The number of nested figures is traditionally about five, but can be as many as several dozen, and uh, is really a fine craftsmanship. I suggest that the Russian doll model provides a useful way of thinking of it. Number one, the overarching scientific discipline that's involved is analytical chemistry, so that's the big doll. Analytical chemistry can be properly defined as the well-established scientific discipline that concerns the identification of compounds and mixtures, the qualitative analysis, and or the determination of the proportions of the constituents, meaning the quantitative analysis. This overarching scientific discipline comprises specific techniques, which includes, but not limited to, trita tritation, 
precipitation, spectroscopy, chromatography, and other examples. Number two, the smaller doll within our bigger doll that we're talking about, a specific subset of analytical chemistry is chromatography. Chromatography is known best by its popular soundbite, which is, quote, chromatography is separation science. The goal of chromatography is to use a process to uniquely separate out a molecule to the exclusion of every other molecule in the universe. This we call being specific. If and only if we uniquely separate out the target analyte to the exclusion of everything else in the universe, do we seek to uniquely measure this uniquely separated molecule with as little error in calibration and bias as possible. Chromatography consists of different techniques to cause this separation, which includes, but is not limited to, preparative chromatography and or instrument-based, or in other words, analytical technique oriented. They are not mutually exclusive as you can have a form of preparative chromatography, such as solid phase extraction or derivatization in conjunction with instrument-based chromatography. The third, or the smaller one inside of that other bigger doll, the third step is a specific subset of analytical technique-oriented chromatography includes, but is not limited to, column-based chromatography. That means the use of capillary or packed columns. Or planar-based chromatography, for example, thin layer chromatography. Or displacement-based chromatography, for example, non-elution-based chromatography. Or mobile phase based chromatography, for example, gas chromatography and or liquid chromatography, or affinity-based chromatography, for example, supercritical fluid chromatography, which is really cool, and you should take a look at it in YouTube, and also separation-based chromatography, for example, IM-based chromatography. Again, much like our other doll, not all of these are mutually exclusive, as you can have, for example, two techniques involved, such as mobile phase-based chromatography, meaning gas chromatography, combined with column-based chromatography, such as capillary or wall-coated open tubular chromatography. Now we're on to an even smaller subset, a smaller doll within it, and that has to do with level number four. A specific subset of mobile phase-based chroma chromatography is gas chromatography, or GC. GC requires the delivery on the column of the analyzed matter, meaning the sample, to be gaseous as opposed to liquid. This is most typically achieved through flash vaporization when injected into a properly heated injector port or resorting to headspace analysis. Headspace analysis has its own set of variables to achieve equilibrium so way it can be indirectly tested. Number five, an even smaller level, a smaller doll, is within the particular technique of gas chromatography, there's further concerns of sample introduction method, which answers the question of how do we get the sample onto the column, and includes but not limited to methods such as direct injection and headspace analysis. Next, we also take a look at column selection method, which is the most influential part of separation. For example, column length, column chemical composition of wall coating, for example, uh, column coating thickness is another variable that we need to be concerned about. Another variable that we need to be concerned about are all the variables that are involved in GC, such as the oven temperature. And then we also have to be concerned about the injector type, split versus splitless, and the split ratio. The flow pressure temperature also involved with it, and all the temperatures that are inside the machine. A smaller subset even with that is the combination of all of these items that truly validated method once it's verified, accurate, precise, reliable, repeatable, robust, and traceable that we hopefully arrive at the qualitative measure, meaning what it is. Understanding all of that is the best method in understanding gas chromatography. The quantitation of how much we have once we get there is performed by a detector such as a flame ionization detector or a mass spectrometer.